Hi, my name is Maya Warren. I attend the University of Wisconsin-Madison where I'm a PhD student researching the microstructure, sensory, and behavior aspects of ice cream and other frozen desserts. Food scientists play such an interesting role in the creation of ice cream from formulation development all the way to processing to adding those variegates which are maybe like that chocolate swirl or caramel swirl. Ice cream is actually a really, really fun, uh, intriguing process. Of course, you gotta have your sort of main ingredients. You definitely need your cream. You definitely need maybe some sort of milk solids, non-fat, so a non-fat dry milk source or a skin milk. Uh, you also need, of course, your sugar or a sugar type replacer, or a sugar alcohol of some sort. Uh, and then, of course, you need your water. Your water then is going to turn into ice when, when it's frozen. And we like to add some gums that help to give a bit of body to the ice cream as well as it helps to impede some of that ice crystal growth. And then you can add emulsifiers. And those help that partial coalescence occur. And partial coalescence is so critical in ice cream because it's what we attribute to creaminess. So you need to pasteurize your product and then you need to homogenize. After homogenization occurs, you then usually then would age your product for four to 24 hours. You then go into uh, freezing. So you'll put your ice cream mix into your um, freezer and you'll start freezing the product. After freezing, of course, you'll package it and then you'll store it in your hardening freezer or your blast freezer. And then, of course, it goes out, loads into a truck for transport to your local grocery store. Making ice cream at home uh, versus ice cream that's being produced commercially yields very different results. And that really all has to do with the freezer itself. The slower you freeze your product, the more time your ice crystals have to grow. And so imagine it taking 30 minutes to freeze a product versus when they're making a product commercially, it's maybe taking 30 seconds inside of the freezer itself. So when you go to the store, you'll see some ice creams labeled as a premium ice cream, a super premium, or maybe even like an economy brand. The differences in those ice creams all have to do with the fat level. The legal definition of United States ice cream must be 10% or more milk fat. Um, so economy brand ice cream would still have 10% milk fat um, or more, but your super premiums would have maybe 15, 18% milk fat. Also, the amount of air, premium, super premium ice creams tend to have lower air. It's crazy how many frozen desserts are out there. And there actually are quite big differences between them. When it comes to custard, it has a legal definition in the United States as well. It mustn't contain less than 1.4% egg yolk. So that's what kind of makes custard seem a bit more rich than ice cream, is that egg yolk. Soft serve really is just soft gelato, soft ice cream, soft frozen yogurt, you name it, that comes from the, straight from the freezer itself. And the unique thing about gelato is that in the United States we actually don't have a legal definition. But the, one of the main differences in gelato is gelato tends to have lower fat than our traditional ice cream. On the market you'll see quite a few products um, that are now low fat or fat free. What food scientists end up doing is that maybe they will uh, freeze at a lower temperature faster and so you create smaller ice crystals and so when it hits your palate you sort of think that it's creamier than it really is because you don't have ice crystals there sort of impeding um, your taste receptors or your, your, your touch receptors on your tongue. Um, in addition, they'll also add uh, a bit more stabilizers, so the product has a bit more bulk to it. The best way to package ice cream to keep it frozen is, of course, in a so, sort of a tightly sealed closed container. Take some scoops of the product that you want and then put it back in your freezer right away. So you're not allowing it to warm up as much, but also, you know, you should probably eat what's in your home freezer within about a week of, of purchasing because your home freezers are not meant to store ice cream for a very, very long time.